Welcome to vsdevelopers.io. Today, we'll be looking into the generic programming aspect of C++. Now, you have been declaring or defining a class or a method of a particular data type. That is, either class deals with integer data or class deals with one particular object type. Take an example, stack. Either you can declare a stack of integers or stack of strings for which you have to write a new class for every type of data. Take an example of calculator. Now to add integers, you have to have a method which is of integer data type. If you want to add float, then that particular method should take float as an argument and then written as float. This is a not generic data type of uh, way of writing a method or a class. Now, how does C++ solve this? C++ solves this with the concept of templates, wherein you can declare a generic data type and then define at the runtime. Does it sound a bell? So when you know the data type at the compile time, right? So the compile time binding happens. Now, when you bind it at runtime, so the compiler doesn't know what type of data it is going to receive. It only knows at the runtime. So when you are consuming a library, you will declare type of data that you want to use that particular library with. So during runtime, now your application initializes the third party library with a particular data type that you want to use it. All right, so let us take an example and uh, look into it. Assume you have the function right, uh, called integer add and it adds two numbers int a comma int b. Well, so the return is going to be simple return a plus b. As you have seen, now this will be limited to your integer data type only, isn't it? Now how do we do for float? So you would go ahead and change the data type to float. It returns float and takes two float parameters. Well, this is not what we want, isn't it? So we are looking for uh, something that makes it generic, isn't it? So how do we want the method to appear? We want the method to appear as, okay, I written some type, which I don't know until runtime, and then my method remains same as add, and so as the data type, I don't know what data I am going to pass. Well, so what is common here is the type. So what type are you going to use? And this is all going to be of same type anyway. Now, how do you define it? Well, it is the same. There is no change to the operation that you perform. The operation remains same. Only how you receive and return the data type will change. Now, how is this possible in C++? Right? So for which the C++ introduces new keywords here, right? So one is your template keyword, right? So template. And then another one is type name. So the generic type name that you have used in this example is type. And angular brackets closed. Well, so what happens with this? Now you can call a function called add, right? add you can call it with integer type a, right? so uh, a comma b where you have declared uh, the data as integers or you can also pass a comma b which are of float types and which also returns float. Now while defining, yes, you will also use the same syntax before the definition and then you define. That's how the runtime identifies that it is going to be uh, taken at the runtime, not the compile time. So compiler doesn't warn you with this kind of error message. 
let us look into the code i have the consumer application right um, which is i, I call it uh, template intro app right? and the libraries that are being offered by uh, someone like you a developer uh, so what i was given is one header file and then one either you can call it a dot lib or dot so depending on static or dynamic library now by looking at this header file i should be able to tell what is the generic type that has been defined and how can i consume it in my application so we are going to look into the stack example a generic stack uh, how we implement it with uh, templates so if you look at it you have template intro dot h this is what given to me and this is the definition of dot h file which is given in format of dot lib just let's assume for the sake of discussion and this is my app which i am currently in if you see i have included dot intro yeah i don't need to do this um dot in uh, h and then what i have here is um int stack well so int stack okay let me add the it is complaining about a string so yes yes well so i have two types string and integer and i am initializing it why am i doing all this right how am i doing all this so first therefore you take a look at it dot h file so this dot h file if you see it is declared as a template and type name as t so you are going to use one generic type of data here so your class name stack and private you have the link structure which has the data as type t and then initialize has two parameters one is again generic type and other one is of link type then in public you have initialize method pop doesn't take any arguments but returns a generic type and then push takes an argument of generic type peak returns a generic type and clean up right so by looking at this i should be able to go to my application i don't need a definition right so i should go to my uh, my application and then say okay i have a stack which is of generic type then i declare the data type at the run time right when my application begins at main now only now it knows that it is going to be of int type right uh, until then the library has no clue whether what data is going to go there then the second stack i am declaring of string type then i am initializing both and see here in this example i am pushing five elements 10 to 15 five elements into the integer stack and then i am pushing five string elements into the string stack then i am initializing a counter just for the popping purpose and then i pop all the integers then i pop the strings and then i clean up so one single class you are using it for multiple data types see the power of it you can use it for any object types in fact you can use it multiple data types as well we have, in this example we have seen only one right so you can also use it for multiple data types one integer one character and all so let us try to run it and see what is going to come out yes so it is loaded and popped in a reverse fashion 14 13 12 11 10 and then a b c d e is also popped in a reverse fashion right so your one single stack with generic data type works for multiple uh, data so this simplifies lot of work lot of repetition of code so it the generic programming makes it code lot reusable than ever you could imagine so uh it it might sound difficult it might appear difficult with too many type names uh, and then initialization of them at every function above above every function or above every class so it might be little cumbersome tedious in the beginning but once you get used to it you can save lot of time and you can give the best libraries generic libraries to your customers as well